Now, inside the membrane gland cell, we have the nucleus, right? That is where the genetic material is found. So that the genes that code for everything that's found in protein or that seem to be, um, or milk, be, milk protein, um, and that need to be turned on in order for milk to be produced are found there. Now, it's important to realize that males also have the ability to produce, potentially to produce milk. They have the genes for milk production. It just never is expressed in them. But they pass those genes on to their female offspring. So, for example, like the genetic material that codes for casein is found in males and females, but only expressed in females, right? So this is the nucleus, right? Inside the nucleus, we have the DNA, and some of those pieces of DNA code for protein. You'll notice that this um, piece of DNA can come out through those pores in the nucleus membrane, and then they can bind to the ribosomes on, this is the rough ER, right? So that's the rough ER. The red one? Yes, the red one is the rough ER, okay? So they're synthesized, and then notice that they get passed to the Golgi apparatus. And so hence here, let me just turn the light off. This is the Golgi, I can turn that off. Oops, uh, turn all the lights on. I don't know which one's from where. Okay, so this is my Golgi apparatus. This is my stack of pancreas, right? Notice that it packages the protein, and then the protein travels, right, inside the cell, and then gets secreted to the outside. So all those proteins that we look at, antibodies, and enzymes, and casein, they all get produced in this fashion. Right? And they get to secrete it to the outside. Okay. So then we also have the smooth ER. So that would be right here. So this is part of the endoplasmic reticulum that has no ribosomes on it. But this is what is producing the lipids. Okay. The lipids don't have to go to the Golgi apparatus. They just simply pass through the plasma membrane of the cell and are secreted in that fashion. Okay, so that would be like the triglycerides, that would be like cholesterol, the long chain fatty acids. Those are all produced by the, by, me, by the smooth ER. Okay. And then one that is not on here, is it? It is. Sugars. Okay, so what is the sugar, milk sugar again? What is our milk sugar? Lactose. Okay, so lactose is produced by the Golgi apparatus. Right? And so it is released and secreted um, by that particular um, structure. Okay? So this is a specialized cell that has all the other components of a eukaryotic cell. So we only have two more organelles, and then we'll be done with the organelles. Oops, wrong way. Okay. Okay. Okay, so two more organelles. Lice. Where have you seen that word before? Lysol. Lysol. <laughs> Hydrolysis. Lice. Lice means to break apart. So lysosomes are organelles with enzymes. And there's like 40 different enzymes that are found inside of the lysosome. Okay, 40 different enzymes. This is what is responsible for intracellular digestion. So intra means inside the cell. So we, in our stomach, that would be extracellular digestion, but then we have to take in substances and digest them even further inside the cell. And there are some really good examples of intracellular digestion, specifically in um, white blood cells called macrophages. 
So these are large white blood cells that eat debris. So macrophages eat bacteria and debris, and they clean it up. They're like the garbage men of the body. In fact, one of the really interesting things that I just recently found out is, is that I have this herniated disc in my back that I've had for a long time, but um, it's supposedly over time, it will get smaller. So when you herniate a disc, stuff gets pushed out and, and the white blood cells, the macrophages will actually go into that area and they'll start digesting it and cleaning it up, right? So hopefully, you know, in five or so years, I, that herniation will keep getting smaller and smaller. Okay, so this is the way it looks. So this cell, in this case, is engulfing a food particle. It could be a bacteria. It takes it in, and then the lysosome fuses with that food um, space and releases the enzyme and then breaks it down. Okay. Now, there are some genetic diseases that are caused by defects in lysosomal enzymes. And one of them is what is called PKU. And this is short for phenyl, phenyl ketonuria. And you might have seen this phenyl ketonuria before on your food when you're grocery shopping because oftentimes you'll say, warning, phenyl, phenyl, phenyl ketonuria, this product contains phenyl alanine. So this is due to a defective um, lysosomal enzyme that can't break down phenylalanine. Oops, phenyl. Phenylalanine is a type of amino acid. So this is an amino acid, okay? So this is so common in our population that babies are tested. How are they tested? Does anybody know, does anybody work with like newborns? Very first thing they do is on the long run, very first thing, but they do it like real close. They prick their heel. Right, and they take a blood, blood. So when you, when the baby is born, they prick the heel and they take a sample of blood, and they're looking for elevated levels of phenylalanine. And the reason for this is, is that if phenylalanine accumulates in the neurons, in the nervous tissue, it will lead to mental retardation or mental de de deficiencies. And it was such a such a, we'll talk about why, but it's so common in our society for people to have this that when they first discovered it, they went into a lot of the state hospitals and started testing people, and they found out that there were people in there, quite a few of them in there, that actually had PKU, and if they would have removed that from their diet, the phenylalanine from their diet, then they wouldn't have had the mental deficiency that they um, observed in the adults, right? So this can lead to mental, um, the nervous system not um, developing properly. And so you control it with diet. And I think they also have some supplements. Okay. There's another um, genetic disease that is also caused by a defect in the lysosomal enzyme, and this is Tay-Sachs. And we'll talk about Tay-Sachs because it's really interesting. It's, not, it's a horrible disease, but it's very interesting from a population point of view because it's more common in certain populations um, than others. Okay, so Tay-Sachs is also that. Okay, finally, peroxisomes. So where have you seen the word peroxide before? Hydrogen. hydrogen peroxide. And so interestingly, our cells use hydrogen peroxide to break down molecules. So remember H2O2, right? That can be broken down, right, to produce oxygen um, and 
um, oxygen and water. I don't have that balanced, but oxygen and water, right? And so this can be used to break down or oxidize different types of chemicals. One that it does that's really important is ethanol. So ethanol is alcohol, right? So if you drink alcohol, um, the ethanol is broken down. A good portion of it is broken down in the peroxisome. Okay, so it metabolizes alcohol for us. It also breaks down fatty acids, specifically long chain fatty acids. And so there is a genetic disease that was actually um, portrayed in a rather famous movie, but you might not have heard of it because it was so long ago now these days. <laughs> but it was called Lorenzo's Oil. Has anybody ever heard of that movie? Yes. Right? So this was a family whose child was um, born with ADL, which is um, adeno -luco dystrophy, you don't need to know that term. But ADL, and um, we'll talk more about that because that is a defect in an enzyme. Um, that cannot break down a specific fatty acids. So this is caused by a defect sorry, in a enzyme that can't break down a fatty acid. And so what happens just like with PKU and Tay-Sachs is this, this long chain fatty acid will start to accumulate in the nervous tissue and it will lead to um, uh, mental disorders and also eventually death. Okay, so very last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the um, back of that um, other sheet that has the description of the persistent organic pollutants on it. So first, let's see what these what these things are pointing to. So what do you think A is pointing to? Mitochondria. So you can write mitochondria next to A. B is pointing down, is pointing to, um, we haven't talked about that yet, so just ignore B. <laughs> C is a lysosome. What do you think B is? Sacrophagy. The Golgi apparatus. E, that is the smooth ER. I wish I had my glasses. I'm not sure what that is. Nope. Is that the rough yard? No. Yeah. Is that rough yard? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Sorry. I can't see the ribosomes. F is the rough yard. And G is pointing to the nucleus. What was A again? A is the mitochondria. So you can write down B is the cytoskeleton. So go back and write next to B the cytoskeleton. And we'll talk more about the cytoskeleton. But it is composed of proteins. So what would be the site of cellular respiration and ATP production? What do you think? A, right? The DNA that codes for a protein, specifically collagen, we talked about that as a structural protein within our bones, would be found where? G, right? Because that's the nucleus. All the DNA that codes for the majority of our protein is found in the nucleus. 
So in the testes, testosterone would be produced where? So what type of molecule is testosterone? Is it a carbohydrate, lipid, protein, or nucleic acid? Nucleic acid? Nope. Lipid, right? It's a steroid. So testosterone is lipid. So where are the lipids produced? Smooth ER. Right, so in the testes, testosterone would be produced in E. Okay. The proteins that are involved in cell moving and changing shape, that would be B. Those are the cytoskeleton. Insulin, a protein to be secreted by pancreas cells, would be produced where? RUT ER. Right? Okay, we just talked about this one. White blood cells, macrophages, ingest bacteria and use this to aid in digestion. Lysosomes, and what number is that? C. Okay. The enzymes produced by the pancreas would be packaged into vesicles by this organelle. Golgi, right? So the Golgi apparatus packages proteins that are secreted. Okay. And then um, I don't see the secreted protein, so just mark off that one. Please mark off that one. And then sugars are produced where? Golgi apparatus or Golgi body. So that'd be D. Oh, glycogen is broken down into glucose in this organelle. Um, Shoot, I think that's a lysosome. Let me see. Intracellular digestion. Okay. So I'm going to record another lecture that is specifically going to deal with the plasma membrane. So the plasma membrane and how things move into and out of the cell. So I'm going to record that tomorrow afternoon. And I will have it posted. Your next quiz is um, next Thursday, and it is going to be over the organic molecules, and it's going to be over cells and then the plasma membrane. Okay, so that's what the next quiz is going to be. Organic molecules. Organic molecules. Okay, have a good rest of your day. Lab notebooks are going to turn in Tuesday. Yeah, so the lab notebooks are going to be turned in on Tuesday. Not your binder, just your lab notebook. This stuff, um, or is it stuff like that? Yes. Um, can I keep that in there? Oh, yeah. oh, this is your lab notebook? Mm -hmm. okay. I just happen to keep it in just for now, but when okay. I turned it in, do I just take, you can take it out? And yeah. The worksheets and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because then I'll make it easier. So I handed this out in lecture. So if you could keep that with your lecture notes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So whatever we do in lecture, just what we have in lab is what I need. Because otherwise I'm looking through notes and I have all of your right. notes and you don't so want me to have them. Yeah, if you don't want me to have them while you're trying to study for the quiz. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I missed um, the homework. Sheet. Yeah. Because I went to take it. I went to take it and I told Sell biology course on my campus. Like, it's disappeared every time I go to Okay. I contacted Bruce House. He's the person. What's your name? Samantha Mills. Okay. I left a little comment on it for you about it. Okay. So I can um, contact him. Or do you have access to it now? Yeah. It okay. just popped up today. <laughs> Okay, so I'll let you know. I'll see if I can open it back up for you. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The E. That's a uh, either a that's either a vacuole or a lysosome. 
what are the what are the choices? I'm assuming that's what I could do. 